Hello there ladies and gentlemen, so in this video I'll be showing you the easiest way to homebrew your PSP in 2020. So this is actually a PSP uh, 1006, it's one of the older models and this is fairly stuck. The only modification that I did was uh, allowing you to charge through the USB port instead of here. Well, you can charge here as well, but I don't have the charging adapter, so that's why I made this mod. So as you can see, if I plug that in, it starts charging there. So to begin with, uh, you need to be on firmware 6.61. You can check by going into your settings and then going into system settings and then scroll all the way down to system information and as you can see right now I'm on some kind of custom firmware 5.0 or whatever and I need to be on firmware 6 so to do that uh, make sure you connect your uh, PSP to your PC and click on USB connection and then it should start connecting up and if we go back to the computer now I'll have some files uh, linked in the description for you to make this even easier so what you want to do is just mount this one go into because right now we need to update to our official firmware from the PSP so just copy this over to your PSP folder and what you want to do is overwrite everything and then wait for the dialog box to close all right so now that we have copied everything over we can switch back to our PSP and then just click the X button to cancel and head over to games and memory disk and as you can see we have a version update so click on that all right and then after like a good minute of black screen uh, this comes up so just press ok to start or press x to start And then press this button to continue or you might have to scroll all the way down yeah so just hold this down oh no you can just press it then press accept with the right arrow and then x to start and now this will take a while Alright, so after a while uh, it will say update is complete and then just press X button to restart. So that update there took like around 2 minutes, almost 3. Alright, so now we should be updated. So if we go back into system settings scroll all the way down and as you can see right now we're on official firmware 6.61 which is the latest firmware probably forever <laughs> since it was updated like years ago so okay so next thing we want to go back into usb so back in onto our pc so yeah on the pc find your psp again and there it is and what you want to do is first of all we need to remove the update so go into PSP game update uh, delete that and then go back to your home directory so where you should see like most of these and then what you want to do is go into the files that are provided this time we're going to go into infinity 2 
and what you want to do is copy them over here and when this dialog box comes up press apply overwrite all files then just wait for this to finish All right, so when it's finished, we can switch over to our PSP. Now just press the circle button and go back into games. And right now we should have a few things installed. So we have the Infinity, which will install later. A Chrono switch is for uninstalling custom firmware. So if you installed some custom firmware, you can use this to go back and then fast recovery we won't be using this and then the pro update which will install the custom firmware which is what we're going to launch now by pressing x so this is very similar to the psp update that we did just earlier on so once you get to the black screen here, you should see it says Pro C by Team Pro. Press X to launch it. So we are going to press X. And then it'll say it'll complete a bunch of stuff. Then it'll say complete it and press X to start. So press X again. And your PSP should reboot. And to check if you have custom firmware installed, go into system settings again, scroll all the way down, system information, and as you can see, we have 6.61 Pro C. So we have successfully installed custom firmware, and now to make it permanent, we are going to use Infinity. So go back to the games, memory stick, and then launch infinity now by permanent this means that you can like take out your battery take out your memory stick and your firmware will still be installed on the device so whereas normally before you would have to launch the firmware every time you wanted to use it or like after every restart but this time you don't have to so anyway once you get to this screen press x to install infinity Installation is complete. Press X to reboot. And now once reboot, you, you want to go back into your memory stick and you want to launch Infinity 2 again. This is to permanently install it. And now once you're in Infinity, so you press the right arrow here. And you want to choose a firmware that you will launch. Now in the installation I have picked Pro CW, so that's what we have now. And just press X on this one. Then you can just press home or something. Yeah, so just press X to exit. So now we should have uh, it permanently installed. So if we go back into Infinity there should be a, an asterisk beside the pro one yeah so I can, as you can see the asterisk is there straight away so now to show you that the firmware is actually installed properly first of all you can check inside system settings Go down into system information. As you can see, we have 6.1 infinity. And then what you can do is 
turn off your PSP till it's fully off. Then you can remove your memory stick. You can take out your battery. Then wait a bit, then put it back in. So this way there's nothing stored in memory. And then turn on the PSP once again and you should see that the custom firmware is installed into the ROM chip of the PSP. So I'll ask you to set the di date. Um, so I might as well do that. All right. So once you have that done, you can go back into uh, system settings, scroll all the way down, system information. And as you can see, we still have 6.61 Pro C Infinity. So this is handy because you no longer need to store uh, the firmware information on this card and you can actually just stick another card in your PSP. Now what I have here is like a tiny two gigabyte card, but what you actually want is uh, one of these adapters here. So like this one, memory stick pro micro SD adapter. So then you can just buy like a 64 gigabyte a micro SD card, which I did, so it's coming from Amazon soon enough. And so with the custom firmware, uh, you can play backup of your games. So I'll show you how that looks now. I'll just turn off the PSP and uh, insert the memory card again. All right, so an advantage of using uh, custom firmware is that you can play backups of your UMD drives. So basically here I have like Lego Batman and, and if I don't wanna like carry the disc around, I can just store it on the PSP's memory card. Now I'll probably make another video on how to make backups of these two ISOs but I'll just quickly show you how it's done by running one of my other backups from the PC. And then another advantage of running games from the ISO is that they don't make noise because these are kind of noisy when they spin up and the PSP can read data a lot faster from a memory card instead of these, so your games will launch faster and the loading screens will be uh, a lot less. So to do that, you wanna go back into USB connection and then go into your PC. And open up your PSP here and you'll need a, uh, if you don't have an ISO folder, you can just do create new menu and then just call it ISO in all capital letters. And then you can just copy over some games that, that you have. So I'll just copy over um, Killzone since it's quite a small game compared to the other ones which are like almost a gig or so. Now sometimes this dialog box can be deceptive, I don't know why, but it tells you that it's done even though it's not done, so what you actually want to do is wait for this dialog box to disappear, and since PSP is using, I believe, USB 1.1, I'm not even sure that it's USB 2, so it's gonna take a while to copy these fairly large files. Also, another way you can tell that your PSP is copying files is you can see this LED light flicking and then the 
bar here is moving forward and back. All right. So as you can see there, the dialog box disappeared. And if we switch back to our PSP, it's no longer flicking and there's no like bar going across. So that means it's done copying. Then just press back to exit out of this. And you can go back into games, memory card. And as you can see, we have kill zone liberation now. So we don't need to use this yoke here anymore. Then if I launch it up, it's gonna be a good bit faster than just uh, using the disk, for example. Yeah, so I'll actually just turn the game off now. So yeah, that's that's about it there for the PSP video. Um, I'll leave a link to the hardware mod uh, if you want. It's uh, the video is not the best, but it it gives you the general idea what you need to do. Basically, you need to take everything apart and then connect a wire from around here up to the USB port so that way it just charges the battery. Um, if you're using, so this should work for PSP 1, 2, or 1000, 2000, 3000. Um, if you're using PSP Go, it's a little bit different because they have some different firmware, for example, if you want to update, but then the rest of the steps should be the same. You can also choose LME, but I just chose Pro C2 because that's kind of better, in my opinion. And uh, so all these files here, I just I got them from here. But as you can see here, they're kind of all over the place. So I just made it nice and easy. So you just copy these directly over to your PSP and you have the Pro Recovery, you have the Infinity Installer and you have the Downgrader like all in one. So you don't need to download them separately, which can get a bit confusing since you need to put them like in sort of different places. So yeah, I'll share this. Um, in the description, I'll also link this if you want to get the firmware for PSP Go. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and bye bye.